First things, my battery's almost dead on this, so I'm going to do this as quick as I can. Let's run the intro, and I've got an apology to make to you. Okay, my apology is my last video. I did it on strobing, and it took way too long. I covered everything from everything you need to know, and that was a mistake. I What I needed to do was break it up, so I'm going to redo that video, and that's what this one is. This is video number one of three plus. In this video, we're just going to talk about the basics. We're going to talk about uh, insurance, we're going to talk about equipment, and we're going to talk about safety. Um, so if you sat through the 45 minute long one I had, God bless you, but this is going to be, this will have a little more information in it, um, as much as I can get into it in a shorter period of time. So let's get right into it. And then we've got some other things to discuss at the end. So first of all, strobing, what is it? Um, strobing is adding light to a sporting event or any scene with action movement that you don't have enough ambient light to get good photos freeze action and before we get into how you do that i want to get into one very important thing um now i'm looking over here i have a monitor over here so i'm keeping an eye on my uh uh battery life um because i'm charging a battery right now and this one's got half power so fingers crossed um Insurance is very important. If you're if you're a photographer running a business, whether it be just shooting youth sports or covering uh, professional and World Cup, Olympic level stuff, or you're a photojournalist, or um, even if you're just a hobbyist, having insurance on your gear is a really good idea. So go to your insurance agent, tell them you're a photographer and you need to insure your photo gear, and you need to get liability. Before you get the liability, you may want to check with your local state, see if they have a requirement for hanging strobes. Uh, most states don't for the high school level, um, but in all honesty, if you're just going to do high school, I would say look at at least a half a million dollars in liability, in, in, liability insurance coverage. Uh, if you're going to be shooting professional or college, I think college is one million, professional might be a little more. Uh, I like to keep about 1.5 million. At a half million, uh, depending on how good your insurance company is, who they are, where you're located, uh, what exactly you're going to be covering on the in insurance, you're going to be paying five to six hundred dollars a year for that insurance. Well worth having. Uh, but do not hang a strobe or do a remote camera in a position that could fall on somebody until you have insurance. Okay, that being said, strobes. Strobes are studio strobes or flashes, camera flashes, like a 580 EX2 or a uh, SB24, uh, Vivitar 285. Uh, the studio strobes, uh, Alien Bees, Einsteins, Inochromes, uh, Profoto, um, just a, there's a whole, a whole bunch of, of strobes out there. Now, you may have strobes already. You may have uh, got some old strobes sitting in a closet that maybe you you haven't ever used. Maybe they're given to you or left to you by an uncle or a family member who was a photographer. Uh, maybe it's something you picked up a long time ago and you were going to get into and you just didn't like the portrait thing and you just kind of shoved them to the side. Or maybe it's something you use on a daily basis for doing portraits. Um, with me, when I started strobing, uh, I used Vivitar 285s, uh, the, the old 80s, 70s, 80s era flash guns. And I used the, I got them off eBay and Craigslist for I think a total of 50, 60 bucks for the pair. Uh, I got battery packs for them. I got cheapo Chinese uh, wireless triggers and I was using clamps from Home Depot. That's how I got my start. But using Vivitar 285s in a gymnasium, using two of them, you can cover half court at I, anywhere between ISO 800 and 1600. I'm not going to give you exact numbers because every gym is different. Uh, I may be able to go into one gym with one setting and use 
uh, one ISO, go into another gym and have a totally different ISO. And it's, it depends on the size of it. It depends on the stuff in the ceiling. It depends on the color of the gym, uh, how the bleachers are set up, where I can put the strobes, how high they are, how low they are. A whole bunch of things fall into that. But that's what I started with. Then I moved up to some cheapo strobes to see how I like that. And I liked it really good. And the cheapo strobes, I'm not even going to name. They're, they're not worth anything. Um... You get the Vivitars actually gave me better light. Um, but then I moved up to Alien B AB800s. Not the ideal strobes for strobing sports, but I was doing both strobing and portraits. So they worked out great for me. Uh, the best strobes I've found are Einstein's from the same company as Alien B, Paul Buff. Everything, all the all the strobes and stuff I talk about will be linked in the description below, so you can go take a look at them. But um, the Alien B uh, AB800s are not the best strobe for strobing uh, sports because they don't really give you a good flash duration. Now the flash duration, uh, the easiest way to to, to uh, describe this is to tell you how to set up your camera. When you're getting ready to strobe an event, you set up your camera without the strobe. You go in and you say, okay, this is a dark gym. At ISO 400 or ISO 800 and my shutter X-Sync, which is typically 1 250th of a second, might be less, might be more, um, but typically they're 1 250th of a second, at f 4.5 i take a picture it's a dark frame i can barely barely make out the outlines of people on the on the court or on the ice or whatever but you can't it's not a usable image it's junk um you, and you look at it and go i need like two or three stops of light added to this then you're adding the strobe light the strobes and their flash duration is what you need to look for the quick flash duration flashes during that 1 250th of a second shutter opening, and that acts as your shutter. It freezes the action at whatever that flash duration is. So if you've got a flash that f fires at 1 1,000th 1, of a second uh, flash duration, then that's what your shutter speed is the equivalent of. And when you take that picture, you look at it and you go, wow, look at that. It's sharp, it's clear, and I'm at ISO 400 or 200 or 800 instead of ISO 6400. Uh, it just, it, it brings in good light so you can do much more with the photos. If you need to do poster size prints or go in and crop really close, uh, you're, you're using a lower ISO so the quality is much better. Plus the colors of the uniforms pop much more. So most flashes have a flash duration of about one three hundredth of a second at full power and then as you power them down which you want to do uh, when you power them down they will their flash duration will get shorter so like for example a Canon 580EX2 uh, it's one two fiftieth of a second at full power but at quarter power which I normally shoot mine at it's one two thousandth of a second flash duration so in reality, I'm getting like a one two thousandth of a second shutter shooting indoors at ISO 800. Um, with the Alien Bees, at full power, you're basically getting a bare minimum like one eight hundredth of a second. And for some reason, Alien Bees are unlike any other strobes I've seen. The less power you give the Alien Bees, the longer the flash duration was. And that wasn't good. So if I shot at eighth power it was like one three hundredth of a second it was horrible lots of ghosting but for strobes for most strobes uh the einsteins are great at the lowest power rating they're like one ten thousandth of a second um so what you want to look for when you're looking at strobes if you have strobes if you have flashes already go to the manual or if you don't have the manual, check on, check the manufacturer's website and look for the technical specifications. There's a T1 and a T5 setting. Um, not everybody gives both. 
Some of them won't give either. They'll just say flash duration. But as long as your T, let's see, as long as your T1 is a high number somewhere in the power range, you're good to go. Now, I say with flashes, you don't want to use it at full power all the time. And the, there's a good reason behind this. At full power, that flash, whether you're on rechargeable batteries, a battery pack, or however you can supply power, that flash has to recharge. The less power of the flash, the less it has to recharge. So the quicker it recharges. Um, I Right now, I use a... a a Canon 580 EX2 and a Autorama Streak Light Flashpoint 360 AD, which is a bare bulb flash, kind of like a Quantum Q flash. Um, they're both on battery packs, and at about I'm doing about eighth power on the Autorama and about half power or a quarter power on the on the uh, Canon. And they recycle about the same speed. It lets me shoot in, in gyms between uh, 800 ISO and 1600 ISO, depending on the gymnasium. Um, and that gives me a, a, a flash sync of about one two thousandth of a second. So I use those. I've used Alien Bees. My preferred uh, strobe is... Um, Paul Buff Einsteins. They're 360 watt seconds, and at full power, they're about one one thousand. Actually, about less than that. They're about one six hundredth of a second. But using a strobe at like quarter power or half power, beautiful. I mean, you're going to be three one three thousandth of a second, one four thousandth of a second, and you're going to freeze that action. So now. Profoto makes something. I'm, I'm trying to remember what it's called, and I think it's here. Profoto D2. A Profoto D2 claims to have a one six sixty three thousandth of a second flash duration. Um, the Einsteins have a flash duration of uh, all the way down to one. F oh, I was wrong. I'm sorry. At at the lowest level. At one 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 twenty eighth power, it's one fortieth forty thousandth of a second. Now you're not going to be able to go into a gymnasium and set it up at one one twenty eighth power. That's that light is going to be very limited. Okay, studio strobes are by far the best way to go. They're going to give you the best power. If you have studio strobes that have a battery pack and then the, the flash bulbs, the heads stick uh, plug into that and you can have multiple batteries off that, that's good on some levels because you're using a small flash head to mount and the, the battery pack can be safely placed on like the ground or a catwalk or something where it's not going to fall. But the problem with that is if that battery pack goes or that power pack goes, all your strobes all your strobes are done. With something like the Alien Bees or the Einsteins, they have the power packs built into each strobe. So if one blows, you've still got another one. Um, and it's cheaper to fix one of those than it is to ship off one of those big power packs, a Norton or whatever it is, power pack, to have it fixed. Plus you're without it for who knows how long. Um, but you are mounting a heavier strobe. So mounting it, whether it's a strobe or a flash, what I like to use are super clamps. You can get them from Manfrotto. Um, a bunch of companies make super clamps. Manfrotto seem to be the industry standards, though. Uh, you can get a magic arm if, you're using, if you need to move them around, uh, also from Manfrotto. But your best bet is if you're using strobes... Um, and you can just mount them relatively easy. Having a magic arm in your bag for each strobe is good, but if you don't need to use it, don't use it. The more you add to the super clamp and uh, between the super clamp and the strobe, the more points of failure you could have. But anyway, mount it to a super clamp, mount the strobe to it, and now you want to think about safety. You need the safety cable stuff. 
So what I like doing is having a cable go around the mount, the, the super clamp, so if that clamp fails, it's got a, a cable on it that's wrapped around a railing or a pipe or something that's not going to fall that far. Uh, plus, I'll have a safety cable around the strobe. So if the strobe comes off the mount or the mount falls, it's, it's cabled in. And I'll take um, a tin snip and cut a couple small holes so I can run a safety cable through the reflector. So if the reflector would pop off. On top of that, with the reflector, getting a piece of Lexan from Home Depot, Lowe's, wherever you can get a thin piece of Lexan. And I'm talking thin, like something that you could almost snap in half. Using a, a razor blade, carefully take your reflector, the, the large op the opening in, and put it down on that uh, plexiglass, draw a circle, and then cut it out. Punch four holes into it and punch four holes into your reflector end. And using zip ties, mount that to the uh, uh, reflector as tight as you can so nothing can come out. That way if your flash tube explodes, which they, they can do, you won't have shards of glass falling down on people. Um, and that's really it on the safety for if you're using super clamps. If you're in an area where you can't use your super clamps, you don't have a balcony, you don't have an upper track, you don't have uh, the side of bleachers that you can use, you have to use light stands. Uh, I've used light stands everywhere, everything from 5 foot light stands to 13 foot light stands. Uh, 5 foot light stands I'll typically take to the top of bleachers when I can't get onto the side of bleachers I can use them in I shove them into the top corner zip tie them to the the uh, side of the bleachers and uh, I'm, I'm good to go if you if you're using strobes and you have to run power cord then make sure your power cords are not going to be tripped over if you have to use a 13 foot stand that's standing up by itself Put it in a place where it's out of the way, where you're not going to be having people walk by, walk into it, knock it over. Plus, sandbag it down. 20-pound sandbag. You can get those at B&H Photo. Uh, they come empty and you fill them yourself. But uh, uh, sandbag that down. Take some gaffer's tape. Tape down the feet so they stay. I mean, even if somebody bumps into it, it may not fall over with that sandbag, but it may move it out of where you've pointed it so tape it down tape your extension cord down if you're using one and just play it safe look at it i mean can somebody knock this over if a kid is over here playing is he going to run into it what can i do to stop this from happening that's what you need to do you need to play it safe because the last thing you want to do is call your insurance agent and go we've had an accident you're covered but you never want to use that coverage so um, that's basically it uh, on, on that one thing I forgot to touch on and I'll touch on that real quick triggering triggering your strobes you've got two options wired or wireless in the professional levels 9 out of 10 times you're going to want to use wired but they will help you set that up like if you're in a, a NBA or an NHL stadium and you're setting your strobes up up in the catwalks You'll plug them into specific power plugs that they have. They'll, they'll tell you, plug into plug four. And there'll be plug fours all over the place up there. So you plug your plugs into plug four. And then you they'll say your sync cord should go into mic uh, plug one. And you'll plug it in with, you have to have mic adapters and everything. You'll have to have a bunch of adapters. You need to check with your arena beforehand what, what type of adapters you need. But what they'll do is they'll run that plug, that mic cord, you'll run it from your sink on your strobe down to that plug. And then in the sound room, they'll say, okay, plug one is Joe Photographer's strobes, uh, and he's going to be sitting bo on both sides of the court or both sides of the ice. I need to have where he's sitting a cable coming to him. And you'll sit down at your designated place to shoot, and there will be a cable either marked with your name or mic plug one, and you'll plug that into your camera, and you're triggering it with the camera. 
if you're able to use pocket wizards or uh, wireless transmitters, pocket wizards are your, are your industry are your industry standard. Uh, pocket wizards come in a, a bunch of different flavors, and the ones you want to look at are the X, the plus threes, and the multi max twos. At the college level, unless you're shooting a Division One top 25 team. Uh, you're going to be okay with the plus threes. If you get into places like North Carolina, Duke, uh, Georgetown, uh, some of the big main major schools, uh, there's going to be other people strobing. And while there are multiple channels, the multi-maxes, you can send those into Pocket Wizard. And f it used to be for 40 bucks, you could get custom channels added to each radio and that way you could go anywhere in the world and nobody was going to have the same channel as you and that way you could shoot knowing nobody else is going to accidentally trip your your strobes and you're not going to be accidentally tripping someone else's strobes so that's multi-max twos are the way to go but they're the more expensive ones the the cheap bare bones one if you're just doing high school shooting uh are the the plus x's uh but anyway, that's what you need to get started. So go check your closet, see what kind of flashes you have, get some good rechargeable batteries, or if there are battery packs available and they're not, I mean, you can afford them, go ahead and get the battery packs. They'll help your battery, your flashes recharge quicker. If you got studio strobes, great. Get yourself some magic clamps or super clamps. It, this is a learning process. When you go out and you strobe for the first time, you're gonna find you have a lot of errors. And you're, you're, wow, I, I didn't have them pointed just right. You're going to learn. But the more you do it, then you're going to learn the, the limitations of your strobes, the limitations of the gear you have, maybe what you need to add to it. Maybe you need sports reflectors instead of the standard reflectors on strobes. Maybe you need that magic arm or you don't. Maybe you need 13-foot stands instead of using the balcony. Maybe you need the balcony instead of 13-foot stands. There's a whole bunch of different things that will you'll learn and we'll address those in the next two videos i said this would be a three plus parter the plus is next fall when we get into football i'm going to go over um i'm going to go over strobing high school football and soccer high school and below there's a couple other videos i'm going to be doing for you very shortly one um I've been talking about it and talking about it and I haven't done it yet. We're going to do the giveaway for the carbon fiber monopod. Second, uh, we're going to be doing some what's it like to be a, a working sports freelancer. Uh, I'm going to take you into the Colorado Rapids media room. I'm going to take you in uh, onto the sidelines, onto the, the end lines of a game, let you see what I'm shooting, how I'm shooting it. And uh, then I won't go into editing in that video, but we will have a photojournalist editing plus a max preps editing plus a personal editing. The, all three of my editing workflows are different. So we're going to do that. We're also going to look at some car photography. Uh, that'll be coming very soon. Uh, if you are new to the channel please subscribe uh, and after you've subscribed hit the little bell uh, it lets you know when a new video goes up um, hit, hit the like button if you liked what you heard so far check out my other videos uh, I've got some really good ones we've uh, I think they're really good um, and I've got more stories coming along too there's there's more photographic stories uh, uh, I'm really hoping that this can be something that can be beneficial to you, that whether you're a, a beginner or a seasoned professional, you're going to learn something. I find I've been shooting since 1988, so my gosh, 30 years. <laughs> I've been shooting for 30 years, and every day I learn something new, and I hope I hope I'm able to bring you something here that you didn't know. 
So until next time, keep shooting.